Can I ask you a question about about the album uh, just before we finish? Oh yeah, the sorry, because we don't want to go on yeah, forever about it. But <laughs> yeah, yeah, please. The uh, please the last track, the long track, is called "You Wonderful Rascal." How did that sit with you? Um, I, I liked it a lot. I, I, that was the one you were talking about, where you had like you're just. It's like constant improvisation, like every note's acceptable kind of thing. Um, I need to listen to it a few more times. I found I, I was kind of getting more cognitive of what was happening near the end of the song, especially with you know, the Alan Watts and whatnot. But it's it's a beast. Like I thought I'd listen to that one again. That's the last thing I listened to on yesterday. Was I didn't listen to anything else since then. Um, so it's hard for me to give an honest opinion about it because I didn't make much notes about it than what I said to you about like I liked the way he ended the song and I liked the, the message from John, uh, from Alan Watts there at the end. Um but yeah, it's a good one. It wasn't my favorite on the album yet, but that's one that they require multiple listens, I think. No. Um, but I found like right through from, I don't know, it was like from Cosmic Secrets of the Amp amp to Hedron. Oh yeah. Uh, right down to, from there to the end, I was like almost glued to the speakers. Like I was, I stopped making notes at that point because I was like, I was really taken away. Yeah. Um, cause music, mu- music is broken where I stopped, stopped taking notes. Cause that was a song I'd already heard a couple of times. Cause you released that earlier. Right. Yeah. And so I'd heard it already. And then second hive, I was like, well, this is cool. And then cosmic secrets, Ravenscroft, um, North 16 H Aeromancer. Like those songs, I was like completely out of my my head. Like those are like those songs were really getting to me in a great way. Where I had to, like I left my body. Um, <laughs> the moment, uh, Mac- Macaroni Moon brought me back a bit because it's got some familiar melodies and whatnot, right? So I wasn't as gone with that one with the Yankee Doodle and everything. Um, but I definitely dug it. It reminded me of Frank Zappa a lot. Um, but the momentary return of the quizzical ostrich, that song was just wicked. Is that the one with the the tone stuff we're talking about? I can't remember now. It may be. Found. I can't actually remember. I need to look at yeah. my. I need to look at my own notes. I make extensive notes on albums. Um, and then I was excited. To, I was excited to hear "Seeds of Protectable Fruit" because you gave me um, sound design credit on that song, but I couldn't right. hear my sound design in that song. I couldn't pick it out. But do you remember what it was you used in that one? Like what pigment effect you used? Or uh, patch? No, I can't remember. I know it's a pigments that's patch. Okay. That's that's all. I can't remember which yeah. one it was though, because I had a couple from you. Yeah, exactly. I, like I sent you, like I, I, I'd been making a bunch. I think I sent you like forty of them or something like that. Uh-huh. Um, and then there was the, yeah. And I think uh, the vine- vinegar thief made me laugh a bit because it seemed absurd as hell. <laughs> and, the uh, two, the two sort of mad people conversing in the middle. Yeah, I quite enjoyed doing yeah. that. That was that was meant to make people laugh. That's just supposed to be funny. It was great, and um, then I really liked the uh, the 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 spoken word about the the pomegranate. You know. Oh yes, yeah. That was that, that was that, another that, another sort of Monty Python esque sort of absurdist kind of. Yes. Exercise. So did you write that stuff? <laughs> yeah. Did wrote, you write that and have someone speak it? I wrote it and spoke it. Yeah, yeah. That was your voice there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I wasn't. I wasn't sure because it was like because it's because it was credited to a different voice than Granny, but it sounded a lot like Granny. So I thought maybe it was you. I didn't know if that was if you because a lot yeah, of pitch shifting going on and manipulation, so it's hard to tell where it's coming from. Yeah, that's that's the pitch shifter, um, Little Alter Boy, by who does Little Alter Boy? Um, toy, what's it? Soft Toys or something. Um, but yeah, that's that, that's a that's a it's a great little plug-in for monophonic sources. It does pitch shifting really well, and it's great on voices because it's quite clean, but it just has that sort of uh, that uh, fizz of artificialness that lets you know it's processed. I think if you listen to it carefully. But yes, yeah. I just I just do I could just do that kind of voice or something, you know. And then if I do that, and then I pitch shift it up or down, it doesn't sound like me anymore, you know. If I, if I, yeah. if I squeeze my own vocal cords into shape, uh, I can get all these characters, you know. And it's great. It's great fun. I love doing it. But I've got to I've got That's to good, watch then. because there was one track, um, uh, thousand years that track where I had a whole monologue in the middle that was very serious and very, you know, I used my my radio voice like this you know very very and then then pitched it down and it was very very impressive voice but i realized that it was just insufferably in, insufferably uh, self important you know so the only part of that i kept was the the refrain a thousand years a thousand years that that comes through it so i've got to watch because i could i could go overboard on that i could do a whole album of characters just talking you know which i might do one day <laughs> Because when I was young, I used to do these sketches with my best pal Michael, and we used to write um, Monty Python type sketches when we were fourteen or fifteen, you know. 
and uh, so I can slip into that quite easily. Nice. So yeah, I, I wish I had a better answer for for Wonderful Rascal. I know that I I was kind of because I've been stretched for time as I always am right now. I guess nature of having a baby and everything. Um, I I was like I was wanting to make sure I got everything listened to before today. And um, and that was when I think I can't remember if it was yesterday. Or the day. Well, I've, I was messaging you whenever I was listening to it. Um, so I don't know if it was yesterday or the day before. And I do need to listen to it again. Like I was saying to you, um, how I used to spend every Saturday night, you know, in the lights off, listening to albums until I couldn't stay awake anymore. Yeah. Um, your album would definitely be top of the list for the next time I do that. Um, and that's the song I want to dig into because it needs that kind of attention. Yeah, the reason, I, the reason I asked was that it was the one that I thought would probably separate the the men from the boys. You know, it would be, it would be the one that you would oh, yeah. you would probably like it. You would probably get it, but ninety percent of the people who listen to me and like some of the some or all of the stuff I do would probably scratch their heads and think, "What on earth was that?" Especially with uh, Ryan doing his theremin. You know, and laughing hysterically and maniacally about the the torture he was putting his viewers through. For those who haven't heard it, uh, Ryan is the sixty cycle hum guy, and he was putting a theremin through guitar pedals just to see what happened. And he makes the mo- most wonderful collection of horrendous, fucked up sounds that just sound like <laughs> like the world's coming apart, you know. And he laughs uproariously about it all. And at the end of the video, he says. Why are you still here listening to this? Which, of course, I put at the end of my track because he features playing his, his theremin throughout it. And, which, and the theremin noises are accompanied by me just freaking out on the keyboard, just bashing any old note to try and find something, which, of course, I do. But you've got to sit through, what, three or four or five minutes of me just walloping the keyboard. Uh, so, it's, it's uh, yeah, it's, uh, it, that's why I asked you about it. <laughs> well, it, and it gave me that, uh, like, that, that feeling I get when I listen to like 200 motels, you know, or like that era of Zappa where he would like do a lot of what I call brown notes, you know, where he would intentionally write this music that was very patient testing, but it was pre- presented in a way that, you know, like if it was, it's hard to explain. Like there's a song on yellow shark. I can't remember the name of it where like the whole song sounds really uncomfortable, but it's played with the, with the like attitude and confidence of a beautiful song. You know, it's just like it's just it's just like you're just like replacing all the golden notes with brown notes. Right. You know, and I'm not saying the song the song isn't quite like that because it's not all brown. You know, for lack of a better description, but it reminds me of that that whimsicalness where it's like you just you're just throwing caution to the wind like the conventions are out the door. But yet, it's the same way microtonal music will bring you along. Like a good microtonal song doesn't feel microtonal; it feels normal. But you're you're trying to like if your musical ear doesn't land right on it, because you're going like, "What are these notes? Those notes <laughs> shouldn't go together." Yeah, you know. And um, and there's a lot of that going on, which I really enjoyed about it because that's and I'm sure that's probably what you're thinking. Like, is you know, because you and I can we're the kind of people that will endure things that people find torturous because we find that flavor of music um, just as, as as appealing, right? You know. Um, so, and I'm not trying to say it's a torturous song because it really wasn't. Like I found myself digging it, but my initial feeling right, I was listening to it was this is going to take another few more listens. <laughs> which is one of those things. Yeah. When you're creating music, that's one that's one par- perspective you lose, right? Because once you've written a song, you've mixed it a couple times, you're already getting sick of the song. You know all the magic of it. You know the weak points of it. You know there's parts that might make you question. Your listener aren't picking up on any of that for the first time they listen to it. They're just kind of going like, where do I focus? And there's all this stuff happening, which I know my music is really bad for too. Don't say bad for, but it's guilty of is more of a term, I'd to say. It's not a bad thing. I think it's great. Yeah. That I, only, that only music, happens to me. That only happens to me. The the thing you're talking about where you, where you get fed up listening to the song, that only happens to me with the the more straightforward stuff that I do, something like "You Wonderful Rascal," uh, was was like it was like mining in a in a diamond mine for me. You know, it was like what what am I fi- what will I find here? And then halfway through it, uh, I get in touch with the Hatfield and the North stuff, and that becomes another diamond that I that I that I discover in there. But if I've got, a sh- I don't often do straightforward rock songs, but when I do, uh, I like them when I first do them, and I think that's pretty cool, you know. Because I sound like all these other yeah. rock guys, <laughs> so I must I must be quite good at this. And then after you know, as you say, mixing it several times and mastering it and listening to it, and then I listen to the album and it's in the sequence on the album. Those are the ones that I skip because you know I know once I'm a minute in, 
that's the way it's going to be more or less to the end. There's not going to be any big sort of changes or big adventure stuff. But I still I still leave them in because I know that other people like them. You know, there's the, I like I liked it to begin with. I just don't want to hear it all the time. And other people are the same. They like it the first time, and then maybe that becomes their favourite. I don't know because I don't know what I don't know what everybody likes. So I leave I leave them as part of my part of my catalogue. But if I was if I was being brutal about my catalogue, those are the kinds of songs that would go. You know, I would take them out because they 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 don't they don't eventually don't excite me the way that something like You Wonderful Rascal I'll probably still be listening to that in 10 years time and going yeah that's that's something that's a, that's a journey that you don't get most times you listen to a piece of music you know and, and I and I have found in my own musical ma- making too the songs I'm most excited about people aren't usually excited about it's it's always the ones I'm least excited about they enjoy the most you know the ones the throwaway songs almost you know like the the devil went down to georgia kind of songs yeah i've i've discovered that too that's what that's why i'm not too critical of of my own um what would it be the when i do straightforward stuff i'm not i'm not too critical of it and sometimes sometimes through taking a straightforward approach you discover a gem you know you ju- you just come up with something like the flesh which is really really it's not that different from everything else and it's a good ver- it's probably my best version or one of my best versions of that thing you know that sort of traditional kind of rock music and it's it's got the JHS guys doing their 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 thing you know so it 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 came out it came out nice and quite a lot of that album is like that i think there's there's some good stuff and one or two places there's some real some real gems that i've discovered you know but there are there are, there are probably a handful of tracks that I go uh, I don't want to hear that again. <laughs> but so, what can you do? You can't you can't love yourself all the time, Chris, can you? No, as as Cliff Claypool could say would say they can't all be zingers. 